All right, I got this. I know who the pike is for and who the 34 is for, but I'm not gonna tell you until the end of the video. All right, well, the two dominant forces in the mountain bike suspension world, RockShock and Fox, um, they have two very competitive, I guess you could call them trail bike forks, Fox having the 34 and RockShock having the Pike. So both of these brands make a bunch of different forks for different use cases. Um, these two tend to get compared back to back a lot because they do, are, they do offer them on the same travel range and wheel sizes and stuff, and they're typically on your trail bikes or light trail bikes slash enduro trail bikes whatever you wanna call them. Um, anyways, we definitely get asked a lot which one's better than the other. It's a very hard question to answer because they are both phenomenal suspension products. They do have some unique features about them that might work better for some of you and you know the other might work better for a different you know, group of you guys depending on what you're looking for in a fork. Um, so for this video, we're gonna focus on the two sort of top tier segments of these forks being the factory version of the 34 and the ultimate version of the Pike. Um, there's a couple other variants offered in different price points. A a lot of different variants and specs and stuff go into all these. So for all of that, um, hit the link below in the video description and there is a nice long blog article that details all of that sort of stuff. I'm gonna kind of stay a little bit high level today so this video doesn't end up being an hour long because there's a lot to say about these forks. Um, and just kind of give you a broad overview of some of the major differences between the two that you're gonna wanna consider if you're um, in the market for a new fork for your trail bike. Two hours later. A whole bunch of us in the shop um, ride trail bikes all the time, myself included, and I think every one of us goes back and forth between Fox and RockShock at some point, or we're trying some other different, little bit more exotic suspension brand. There's a lot of good stuff out there these days for everything in the mountain bike world, but there definitely is for a suspension as well. Um, trail bikes are being one of the most popular things. I definitely go back and forth between Fox and RockShock. I like them both. They do have sort of slightly different use cases, and as much as the 34 and the Pike are similar, um, um, RockShock and Fox, where they kind of differ is RockShock's lineup is just kind of segmented slightly differently, right? So a 34, all Fox forks are named based off the diameter of the stanchion. So this is a 34 millimeter diameter stanchion. Um, then they have the 36 and the 40, and then they also have the 32, like on the cross country side. Um, RockShock is a little bit different. So their Pike, Lyric, and Yari are all 35 millimeter stanchions. Um, so to me, when I look at these two forks, I kind of see the Pike as slightly in between the 34 and the 36 um, in terms of travel and weight and adjustability and features. Um, so to talk about some of the key differences between the two of them, the 34 is a little bit lighter. They also offer the 34 and the 34 step cast, which is a really cool, um, you know, lighter weight version of this thing where you can see now, and it's got basically uh, some machine stuff on the lowers that's casted differently, so it shaves some weight. That's only offered in 120 mil travel, but if you're in a 120 mil travel segment, the 34 is probably the ultimate way to go in terms of weight and performance right there. Um, it's gonna be way stiffer and better performing than a 32, um, but still give you something really lightweight. When you step up, when you're closer to like 130 to 150 mil travel, that's where you might really be considering the Pike versus the 34. Um, so once again, 34s in any travel range are a little bit lighter. Not a lot, we're talking uh, a couple ounces or so, so they're pretty similar in weight. Um, so that's a factor to consider, weight's a big one. Um, other than that, in terms of adjustability, so adjustability on forks these days is crazy. There's a lot of different variations of stuff out there. Um, Fox, all the 34s, the factory series are coming with their Fit4 damper. So the way that works is you have a three position damper, open, medium, and firm, and then you have a low speed clicker on the top. The low speed only adjusts the fork in the open position. There's 22 clicks of it. Um, in our experience, almost nobody uses low speed compression damping. It's definitely something you can, as you dial it in, um, dial it up, it makes the fork kind of make it like, feels like it has sand in it, right? And you, you feel it and it feels like a bag of sand. It gives it almost a dead feeling, which can be kind of good to some extent. If you're riding smoother trails and you're pumping jumps and corners and berms, um, it's actually kind of nice. It kind of prevents the fork from diving and gives it a little bit more stiff off the top, like throughout the stroke feel, um, which can be good. But I would say 98% of riders don't use that. They're gonna leave the low speed all the way off and just run the thing in the open position. So 
The dampers do differ on these things. So again, Fit4 in the Factory 34, open, medium, firm. Um, and in the Pike, you have the Charger 2.1 RC2. So this has high and low speed adjustments that are independent of each other, um, which is not the case for the 34. So this has five clicks of high speed compression and 20 of low speed, and again, no matter what position this high speed is in, the low speed is gonna be independent of it. Um, this is a little bit technical and probably over the head of most people and most riders out there. Um, this is a little bit more simplified for everyone. Um, when you do play around with this, which can be fun um, if you spend some time adjusting this sort of stuff, getting your high and low speed like balanced in this perfect spot just for what you're riding can be really cool to play with and tweak with. Um, Having five positions is pretty nice for high speed. Again, like that high speed compression is one of those things where if you have both of these all the way off, you're getting like the ultimate supple fork that's gonna wanna like go through the travel as fast as possible. Um, start cranking the high speed. Those are like your high speed hits. You're pushing into a corner, your G outs, your jumps, you're landing off of a drop. Um, your low speed stuff is gonna be a little bit more like pumping into a corner or pumping into like maybe just like a big transition type of thing. Again, most people don't use low speed. So not to get too into the weeds of all the suspension adjustments, um, on the air side, both of these forks are obviously air springs and they do run tokens. They come in the box with tokens, um, both of them. That's gonna change how progressive the air side is. So again, these are premium level forks at nearly $1,000, um, Pike being 929 and the Factory 34 being 909. Um, so ton of adjustments on both of these things, um, but they are a little bit different. So the Pike is a lot more similar to um, the Fox 36, because that, that that fork has individual high and low speed adjustments, right? The individual high and low speed adjustments gets more important the longer travel your fork gets and the faster you're riding a thing. So for an enduro racer, that's gonna be a little bit more important. For your general trail rider, um, the simplicity of a three position damper is probably a little bit more convenient for everyone. Um, of course, these things both do have a rebound adjust in the uh, lower right. Um, so yeah, hopefully I didn't get too in the weeds of suspension tuning there, but that's some of the main differences between these things that might give you a little bit of an idea of the difference between them and how they're gonna feel on the trail. Um, another kind of interesting difference is that all the 34s are coming with a um, quick release axle, so it's still a 15 by 110 or 15 by 100, so you can get a non-boost for the Fox. Um, the Pike is coming with a bolt-on axle and it's only 15 by 110 boost. It doesn't, they don't offer it in a non-boost anymore like Fox still does currently. Um, RockShock has uh, compatibility with torque caps, so that's a, a special end caps for your hubs that give you a huge amount of contact onto the lowers of the fork, giving you like a super stiff front hub feel, which is actually a pretty good design. Um, a lot of wheel manufacturers do make what's called torque caps, so you can get them if you have a pike, um, whereas you couldn't if you're running a Fox fork, you just kind of run the traditional end caps. So that's some of the more technical differences. Now let's talk about the on-trail feel. Several of us at the shop have spent a lot of time on these forks, um, myself included, and I've definitely seen both of these forks evolve over the years, and they both come a really long way. Um, for, these are both 2020 models, although it is 2019. They usually release them a year early. How that makes sense, I don't know, but welcome to the bike industry. Um, so the Fit4 now is pretty revised for 2020. So is the Charger 2.1. Um, they've both come a super long way, and what they've done is kind of as both of these forks evolved, they're kind of aiming for um, the same kind of things, right? They want them to be really supple off the top. They want them to have useful and relevant adjustments that work really well. Um, and then they also wanted to give them that ability to where like, they had mid-stroke support, but it wasn't too stiff. And then they had some progressivity to it. So you could use the tokens as an adjustment. Um, they were kind of going for that all around perfect feel in a suspension fork, right? Where it's like reduces hand fatigue, has really good small bump compliance, but it also doesn't want to like dive in when you pump into a corner or something like that. Um, both of these things on the trail are really, really similar. Um, again, I'm typically gonna spec a 34 on a lighter weight bike. So if I have a 120 mil travel um, 29er or 27.5 bike or 100 mil travel, that's where I'm gonna totally favor the 34 because it's lighter um, and because it kind of makes more sense on that type of bike. 
Uh, whereas if you have something that's maybe 130 mil travel to 150, 160 mil travel on your rear end, um, that's where the pike might make a little bit more sense. So if you're wondering just a straight up recommendation, that's mine. Um, if you're riding something that's you know 125 mil or less rear travel, um, I would totally go with a 34. If you're riding something in between like 125 to 150, I think the pike makes a lot more sense. Um, and just in terms like maybe slightly stiffer, slightly more like enduro fork feel. Again, I really feel like in terms of the feel of a pike, it's kind of in between a 34 and a 36. 34 being a little bit more lightweight trail bike feel of a fork and 36 being a lot more um, aggressive, stiffer and enduro type feel of a fork. Um, and on the RockShox side, obviously you have the Lyric, which kind of directly competes with the 36. Um, but both of these things work awesome. It's really hard to really like pin down differences in the things. Um, I feel like small bump absorption is probably a little bit better on the um, on the Pike. Um, although the new Fit 4 is amazing with that too. So it's like, these are almost, to be honest, too close to call. Like if you rode them back to back blindfolded, it would be really hard to be like, oh, this one's way better than the other one. Um, that's just a really challenging thing to do. Um, again, like we talked about earlier, adjustability can play a role, right? If you're someone who does really care about really fine tuning your high speed, low speed compression and having them be independent of each other, then you have to go with the Pike, right? Or 36, but in this case, you're gonna go with the Pike. If you want simplicity um, and just that straight up three levels of adjustment, open, medium, firm, 34 makes a lot more sense, which a lot of trail riders are gonna love that, you know, and actually prefer that because it just makes it simple, right? You have open for this, medium for that, firm for that. Um, so adjustability is a bit more simplified over here, which can be nice um, depending on what you're looking for. So those are kind of the differences in who might favor one of these forks over the other. But on trail, both these things are phenomenal. Um, it's hard to imagine how they could get any better at this point um, when you're comparing these two. There's really no major complaints anymore. Um, you know, four or five years ago, there was a lot of complaints with forks. They blew through the travel. They had no mid-stroke support. They had no small bump, you know, com you know, absorption unless you had no air in it. Um, but now they've come a long way. All the dampers are using negative springs. just working super well these days so it's it's really hard to tell the difference so I think when you're deciding between each one of these it does come down to like what are you doing with the bike how much do you care about adjustments um, what what type of travel range is that bike I mean those are the things you kind of want to consider um, and just what kind of adjustments do you prefer is really gonna be a big factor there as well um, so on the trail yeah I mean there's no real like overall winner between these two things they both work killer it really does boil down to you know, what type of rear end suspension you've got on your bike. Uh, like I said, a little bit more, you might go this way, a little bit less, you might go this way. Um, simplicity of adjustment, ease of use over here, a little bit more technical adjustment and fine tuning ability, boom, over there. Well, I hope that, that didn't, I was gonna say hope that helped and I said hope help or something like that. My brain is a piece of shit. Well, I hope that helped you guys out if you're uh, kind of wondering the differences between these two forks and trying to figure out which one makes sense for you. Um, definitely check the link below in the video description to have a big long write up and a little bit more details about these things, comparing exact traveling offerings, the different um, variants they offer as well. All the other little nitty gritty details are all in that blog video description below. If you need help or just have any more questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us. We have bike nerds on staff all day, every day that ride these forks and all the products we sell and we're totally open to answering questions for everyone. Um, anything you got, make sure to hit us. Uh, let us know down in the comments, what do you guys think? Which one of these do you prefer? Uh, hit that subscribe button and we'll see you in the next one.